Carter Chris and I are here for the Florida Squeeze. And last week we discussed a little bit about why Broward County, which was the most Democratic county in the Southeast United States, the most Democratic large urban county, uh, I defined that by counties over 750,000 residents, uh, in the Southeast United States in 2012 is now trending Republican. And I think that trend is likely to accelerate uh, when we get the returns from 2024. Let's talk about the flip side of that. Duval County, uh, which has about half the residents of Broward, right? Uh, Duval County, Jacksonville, Duval, not Duval. The people from other parts of the country pronounce it Duval, but Duval, as we pronounce it down here, um, is has about half the residents of Broward County, but has a large urban center in Jacksonville. Um, and Jacksonville much like urban areas in other parts of the country, are trending towards the Democrats, um, and unlike the other Florida urban centers. And Jacksonville is um, has always been a more conservative city. Uh, you could argue in the 1960s it was vying for control of Florida with Miami, Fighting that battle within the Democratic Party, exemplified by the 1966 Democratic primary for governor between Hayden Burns, the incumbent who was a former governor of Jacks, a former mayor of Jacksonville, and uh, Robert King High, the very uh, liberal uh, mayor of Miami. In fact, uh, I think by the 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 kind of continuum in, in terms of uh, ideology in the South, uh, right to left, Robert King High would fall off on the left side. He was so far left, as were a lot of Dade County Democrats in those days. Um, certainly Dante Fassell and Claude Pepper were the most uh, left members of the, uh, of the Florida delegation. Um, Bill Lehman came to Congress after that. that. Bill Lehman, you could argue, is the most liberal Democrat we've ever had from Florida um, in the Congress until uh, maybe now Maxwell Frost from the Orlando area. Uh, so, um, but Jacksonville lost that battle. Right, Miami wins the battle, even though uh, Claude Kirk, who's from Jacksonville, gets elected governor as a Republican in 66. Miami begins to control the Democratic Party. And you see Dade County Democrats emerging, Bob Shevin um, and uh, Bob Graham, uh, most notably, and several others in that period uh, that become major um, statewide political figures from Miami. Um, George Firestone, another one, um, et cetera. But Jacksonville then drifts towards the Republican Party. It becomes um, a fairly Republican city. Uh, continued to elect Democratic mayors. Tommy Hazuri, who's one of my uh, great heroes in Florida politics, the late Tommy Hazuri, who passed away a few years ago. He was the mayor of Jacksonville, got back on the council later. Uh, but he really was kind of an exception when you talk about uh, – what had happened with Jacksonville. Um, Ed Austin switched parties, right? And then after that, you got John Delaney, you got John Payton. Um, you had the interrogum, maybe you would say, for four years with, with Brown, but um, really a Republican city that has snapped back in a big way. Donna Deegan is making headlines, right? National headlines. She's become um, a figure of derision on the right. Uh, but she is very much indicative, and she's a Jacksonville, she's a daughter of Jacksonville. In fact, it's a cousin of Tommy Hizuri. Um, Donna Deegan is very indicative of where Jacksonville is going. And I think she's speaking for a majority that live within the city limits right now, which um, if you don't know about consolidation, um, county city consolidation, I suggest Chris Hand's uh, book, uh, which I don't have in front of me, but uh, Chris Hand, uh, you, you can find the book, right? A masterful uh, read on, on Jacksonville. And Duval, uh, Duval County. Uh, why is Duval trending to the left when the rest of Florida is trending right? And uh, as I argue, uh, we haven't done. We're going to talk about Palm Beach and Dade County in the future, and Hillsboro. Um, done a lot about Pinellas, um, but not uh, maybe uh, more in depth with, uh, with the hurricanes having done a number on on um, Pinellas County, but. Um, the, the, the uh, Republican trend in Palm Beach and Miami-Dade, I think, is unstoppable, quite frankly. Um, so why is Jacksonville different? Okay, one, Jacksonville is a more typical American city. So 
unlike other Florida cities, and it's not like the rest of the state, right? It's kind of a proper uh, southern city that didn't have the spurt of economic growth, which Mayor Deegan talks about a lot, right? It didn't have the spurt of economic growth that the Greenvilles, the Charlestons, the the uh, Char- Charlottes I had, um, even Tampa had, right? Um, but it's a much more kind of, like, it's not, it's not attracting the number of wealthy migrants from the Midwest and the Northeast that the Southeast Florida and Tampa Bay areas are. Uh, Orlando is different. We're going to talk about Orange County in the next couple of weeks. Orange County, um, I don't know that there's a trend one way or another there, but I think it's very solidly Democratic, like, like a typical urban area. Uh, Orange County also different because of demographics. Um, in terms of income, right? and when we talk about demographics, we, we always start thinking about race. But in the case of Orange County, I think it's very much down to it being a much more working class area, Orlando being a much more working class area than uh, Tampa or Miami, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Tampa, St. Peter, Miami, Fort Lauderdale are. Um, so Jacksonville is a more typical American city. It has kind of a more it's attracting more um, typical people who move throughout the country to various American cities. I would say the second factor here is um, it is the one place in Florida attracting young professionals um, to work in the logistics industry and some of the other businesses that have popped up around Jacksonville. So um, the sorts of people that are moving to the Dallas suburbs, the suburbs in the DFW Metroplex that are moving to Atlanta, um, the Atlanta suburbs moving to Mecklenburg County um, and even the outlying areas of Charlotte. Not in as great numbers, but you have many of those people moving to Jacksonville. They are not moving to Fort Lauderdale. They are not moving to Tampa. They are not moving to West Palm Beach. But they are moving to Jacksonville in a more typical kind of migration pattern um, of the rest of the country, unlike what we see in uh, um, the southern part of the peninsula, which is quite frankly becoming kind of the um, capital of Magistan, if you want to call it that, you know, the MAGA capital. Uh, you know, I, I would say... Um, not only does uh, President Trump, former President Trump, live in in, in uh, Palm Beach, but the number of MAGA operatives and influential MAGA people in that movement who live either in Southeast Florida or the Tampa Bay area is is off the charts. I mean, it feels like half of them, half of their critical national figures, live in the southern part of the Florida Peninsula. So that is having an impact. Jacksonville doesn't have that. Um, and then another thing that's happening with Jacksonville is you're getting a lot of immigrants, uh, but you're not getting as many Latino immigrants as you are in the rest of the peninsula. What you're getting is um, immigrants from uh, Asian countries. You're getting uh, some immigrants from North African and Arab countries, and they bring with them a different political orientation, maybe a different view of issues around democracy and those sorts of things. So these are the reasons why Jacksonville um, is changing and moving towards the Democrats. And um, Duval does not have the numbers that Broward has or Dade has or Palm Beach has. So it can't offset what's going on in South Florida. It can't offset what's going on in Hillsborough County, which we're going to talk about in the future. Uh, But it can give the Democrats uh, something to be hopeful about. Now, the areas surrounding Duval, which are Nassau, County growing extremely fast and filling up with the kind of people that are going to the rest of the, the rest of the peninsula. So that's not great. Although their numbers, population numbers are so low uh, comparatively, it's not making a huge difference in the statewide total so far. St. John's and Clay, Clay has always been very conservative, but St. John's is getting more and more conservative. And you're even seeing some outflow of people moving from Jacksonville to, um, to Ponte Vedra, to Nocatee, um, there's part of Nocatee and Duval, Duval, but most of it's in St. John's. And then some of the areas, um, other outlying areas in St. John's County. And those people tend to be conservatives. It's no different than, um, we haven't talked about this yet, but the people who have moved from Orlando, um, from Orange County and Seminole County into Volusia. Uh, there's a lot of that going on. And that's actually making Seminole County more democratic. Uh, we'll get into that when we talk about Orlando. But um, this is good news for the Democrats in terms of Jacksonville. Uh, Duval definitely t- uh, moving towards the Democrats. Will Donna Deegan have a tough re-election fight in 2027? Uh, potentially, but I think 
the trend is pretty clear. And um, I, I do think Democrats are going to um, continue to grow um, in terms of their presence in that county and uh, in Jacksonville.